to Loving Truth. We're taking a look at Psalm 92. We looked at the first half. We noticed it is a song to be sung on the Sabbath. And so in the early verses, it talks about the importance of worship music. It talks about the fact that God needs to be our subject, that we need to sing morning and evening of the unfailing love and faithfulness of God, that we need to um, use instruments and to sing with joy because of what God has done for us. That's the heart of real worship music. Verse one, it is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to the Most High. So the, the idea of worship comes out of a heart of gratitude, of thankfulness. But then the latter part of this psalm that is to be sung on the Sabbath day emphasizes the importance of fruitfulness in a believer's life. I'm looking at verse six, only a simpleton would not know and only a fool would not understand this. And he might be referring to the, the fact that God's works are great and his thoughts are deep. The understanding of God is it's a deep, deep subject. Or he could be referring to what follows, kind of a contrast between the wicked and the godly. Verse seven, though the wicked sprout up like weeds and evildoers flourish, they will be destroyed forever. But you, O Lord, will be exalted forever. Your enemies, Lord, will surely perish. All evildoers will be scattered. But you have made me as, a, as strong as a wild ox. You've anointed me with the finest oil. My eyes have seen the downfall of my enemies. My ears have heard the defeat of my wicked opponents. And so now this person who has put their faith and trust in the Lord is acknowledging this vast difference between the wicked being punished and the fact that the Lord has given him strength. He's anointed him with the finest of oil. And indeed, he is fruitful. Verse 12, but the godly will flourish like palm trees. So the wicked flourish, but like weeds, verse 7. The righteous flourish like palm trees and grow strong like the cedars of Lebanon. What wonderful imagery. Palm trees grow rather slowly in an arid climate, and their best fruit usually comes after a long period of, of growth, uh, after years and years of growth. Cedars, on the other hand, uh, demonstrate strength, beauty, stability. They, they tower above their peers. And all of this imagery speaks into the fact that those who trust in the Lord and those who walk with him, the godly, will flourish. Their flourishing will last for years and years, whereas the flourishing of the wicked, like a weed, will soon be pulled up and gone. Verse 13 for they, the godly, are transplanted to the Lord's own house. They flourish in the courts of our God. Get this, verse 14. Even in old age, they will still produce fruit. They will remain vital and green. I think this is an important psalm because we have many people who have walked with the Lord for many years, and they begin to wonder if in their later years they can ever be productive. But even in old age, verse 14 says, the godly still have, um, they're prosperous. They still are vital. Now they're talked about as being like an evergreen, verse 14. They remain vital and green. So a palm tree, a cedar tree, and an evergreen tree, always prosperous. Now all of this depends upon the soil. Verse 13 says they are transplanted or planted in the house of the Lord. So when they are planted in God's presence, then indeed they will be fruitful, even in their last years. Henry Law once said the last days will be their best days. Think of the wisdom, um, the maturity, the experience They've walked with God. They've got stories to tell. And our churches should be filled with saints 
who can impact the next generation to come and who are still fruitful even in their old age. Psalm or Isaiah 40 verse 33, but those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Regeneration is to be planted in the Lord. Sanctification is to be growing in the Lord. And perseverance means you're bearing fruit for the Lord, even in your advanced years. I trust that you're walking with the Lord, that you're planted in him and you're bearing fruit now, because according to John 15, that's how the Father is glorified, that we bear much fruit and prove to be his disciples. Let's pray. Lord, may we follow you in faithfulness and then find out you'll use us in fruitfulness for your kingdom's sake. Lord, as our years go, go on quickly, we noticed in Psalm 90, our years are maybe three score and 10. But Lord, they move swiftly like a shadow. Help us, Lord, to be faithful every day of the life that you give us for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.